Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys the guide for my goal summoner character. Now I'm going to go ahead and link a Grimdon calculator for this in the description below. It's not going to have my exact gear, but it will have basically my gear, just not the exact stats because I couldn't import my character directly. But anyway, let's get started with what you're going to have for this build. Now, I've only been playing this character for maybe about two days or so, so I'm still working on getting a lot of things. I know a lot of people are going to put recommendations in the comments, but I'm just playing the way I'd like to, right? So, let's get started with what minions you're going to have. Now, playing this build, you're not really going to be able to play it until you're like level 94, because that's the minimum requirement for the four-piece goal set. It is a full poison and acid summoner. So, what I recommend doing is if you really want to play this build, you're going to be leveling as a necromancer using raised skeleton and then you can pretty much just play like a vitality skeleton build until then i personally just farmed the set on another character and then transferred over to this one so we have a raptor over here which doesn't really do much damage but it will do much more damage if we can get two mythical eagles eakers because or eikers because what it does is it uh converts physical damage to acid which makes him scale much stronger uh, our main weapon that we use is just an MI you can get off Scorpions. You can go search all this on Grim Tools. We use it because of the full conversion for Briarthorn and Blightfiend. So next up would be our Briarthorn. Briarthorn does pretty good single target. Um, you can see he's 23 of 16, but the main thing we use him for is the Emboldening Presence, uh, which is a real nice buff to all of our pets. And then we have the main guys, which is Blightfiend number one. And because of our set bonus, um, actually, we get two Blight Fiends, which is pretty much the main reason why I wanted to play this build, um, is because of the double Blight Fiend. You know, I didn't want to play the typical summoner. So, there's our two, and then when we crit, uh, we do actually, because of our gloves, uh, we apply a... Well, whenever we crit, we can get a little spider, which is, like, kind of okay. And then, due to our devotions, again, all of this is going to be linked in the Grim Tools. Uh, we have an Eldritch Hound that comes from here, from Bismal's Command. So, with that being said, um, the buffs we have is Mog Drogon's Pact. Uh, we've got Envenomed Weapons, which is from our Galstone, Aether Aura, and then Self Buff, and then Pet Buff. I like to turn all of my pets on aggressive at the start. And then, just to show you guys the current pet stats right now, I am going to be doing a lot more gearing, but again, this is just a guide for you guys because it was very, very requested. So, the pets are currently at 85 fire, 85 cold, 85 lightning, 84 poison and acid, their pierce is bad, their bleed is bad, 85 vitality, 81 aether, and I can actually boost their chaos up with the same gear I have, just better versions of my current gear, to 60%. Uh, all of this plus max res comes from right here on the tree, which is Light of Empyrean, because it gives them 5 to all max res, not just Ellie. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to just go to like the last boss over here, since I don't have any skeleton keys to do any of the other content. And we do have quite a few buffs that we get to rotate. We get to rotate between, for example, Call of the Beast, uh, and Call of the Grave, which are two very nice steroids for damage. You also have the uh, purple potion you can get, which is Wrath of the Beast Tincture. So basically, the way this build works is um, your big Blight Fiends here, what you want to do with them is kind of direct them in towards the center of a pack, and they will do their explosion. Uh, it's important to note that Blight Fiends are very strong because their Rotting Fumes reduces defensive ability by 300. And your, um, your uh, what's his name? Your Briarthorn increases offensive ability by like 100, I think. This is also a very taunt heavy spec, meaning most targets will almost always be on your pets. We also are going to be spamming Wendigo Totem, because Wendigo Totem, if you look here, uh, heals the targets per pulse, but more important than healing, gives them a 33% chance to heal 20% of attack damage and converts it to health. That allows them to face tank majority of content that their resistance doesn't make up for. It's also cool to note that it gives 359 flat vitality damage, and with our set bonus, we actually have 100% of vitality. I don't know if it's set bonus or if it's from 
uh, one of the pieces, I think it's actually the metal, 100% of vitality damage converted to acid for Blight Fiend. So that's just extra raw damage. Now in terms of our devotions, I've been doing some heavy respecking. Right now I've got Guardian Gades on Blight Fiend. I've got Bismal's Command, which I actually for keep forgetting to use on Grasping Vines. Uh, I have Rumor with the Eldritch, um, the Dinosaur basically. And then Light of Empyrean is just for us, so basically when we blink in, uh, we knock everything down if it hits us, and then the minions can come in for cleanup. I'd probably say the reason I wanted to play this character is I've played a lot of summoners in Grim Dawn. Not like an extreme amount, but like, you know, four or five here and there. And I feel like sometimes when there's too many minions and I'm trying to get back into a game, I'm not really learning. I'm just killing stuff, but I don't know how I'm killing it or why I'm killing it. Does that like sort of make sense? But with this setup, it's a lot more controlled. You know, you have very few minions um, and you they're very, very strong, the ones that you have. Uh, just to give an example... Uh, our Briarthorn right now is sitting at 75k HP. He's going to be the tank of our group. Now the Eldritch, the Dinosaur, reduces the target's resistance. Right? You can see this right here is the target resist resistance. And then he also has a chance to Devotion proc, which for some reason is not on right now. There it is. The Devotion proc also reduces target's resistance. That little green debuff that you see on their head, I believe that's the, uh, I don't know, yeah, I think that's the Raptor debuff, but I could be wrong. It may be the Mog Drogon's packed buff from the set. If we were to, for example, upgrade our Yugle's Ikers to Mythical Yugle's Ikers, Ikers, and we actually had two of them, I'm pretty sure the damage of the build would nearly double as well. One thing to take note of. So I also just realized that this may not be the best boss to showcase because this boss actually does mind control and takes over your minions. Um, I don't actually have mind control resistance yet. That would be on my helmet, but I'd have to recraft a new one since this is a budget helmet that we're using right now. But nonetheless, it should just make the fight more fun. I also used to have... Um, I used to have the little abysmal doggy summon on my blink, but because I swapped my blink to the blink that doesn't do any damage, it's not really considered an attack anymore, so I can't really support it with it anymore. But this blink that I found has so far the best, like, cooldown to distance ratio, which is the uh, disorder. 4.6 recharge, 14 meter range blink. That skill's not ready. And it's easy to see their health right here. Remember that a lot of this damage is chaos, I believe. So they're going to be taking some damage, but you can see how much they heal off of the life leech from the totem. Does that just take us out? I think it does. So if anything insta-dies here, I'm pretty sure it's from the mind control. So just look over here and you can see. Still good, I guess. Ooh, something just... I don't know what that is. That's an evil debuff there. That was like crazy chunks. That was like 20,000 health chunks. <laughs> it's okay, we'll get another Black Fiend up here in a second. Yet. And there he is. I actually don't even know what that was because I've, I've like tanked Mog Drogon on Ultimate with these guys and quite a bit of other content, but <laughs> no clue what this guy just did. Unless that was the mind control, but I thought the mind control would show us like a one shot. Okay. 
this just show you guys a little bit more of how the summoner plays because I feel like that wasn't really that good of a spot to show I want to go to like broken hills here sometimes there's some nice density over here okay so in a scenario like this you just target the middle of the pack and you just wait for one of the blight fiends to basically aoe and the aoe from the blight fiend will pretty much clear all the white mobs if it's like you know not whites and they're like rare or i don't really know what the mob tier is called in grimdon then you can just hope for the double proc of them like here here we can just attack right here in the center wait for a blight fiend aoe sometimes it doesn't go off it's all about really aiming your minions. Aiming your minions is really important in Grim Dawn, and it may feel bad at the beginning, but once you start getting total speed on your character, total speed makes the biggest difference in Grim Dawn for your minions. Kind of very similar to Path of Exile, how you really want to run like haste on your minions. Uh, it's also worthy to note that the reason why I have one point in Devouring Swarm is our set bonus actually makes it, so Devouring Swarm reduces their poison and acid res by 20%. Without the set bonus, it doesn't it doesn't really do it. Okay, I guess that's pretty much good enough. So since we've shown some some gameplay. I want to go ahead and talk a little bit more about the build, um, more so the progression and what's later to come with the character. So if we look at our gear right now, we've got our four piece goals. These cannot really be replaced. However, we can still get better variants of them. So what I mean by that is, uh, if you look here at the bonus to pets, I know there's a plethora of stats on this, but if you look where it says bonus to pets, uh, we do have a 30% chaos resist metal. So that's one thing that we're looking to upgrade to. Um, since the Chaos Resistance is one of their low resistances on the pets. Uh, this Void Mancer's Cord is pretty much useless for us. If you look, it gives 91 Lightning Res and 40 Vit Res. But if you look at my pet bonuses, their Lightning Res is so far overcapped and their Vit Res is so far overcapped that this belt doesn't really have any use in this. Um, this is a simple green weapon. It's an MI, meaning it's a monster infrequent, and it really just rolled 5% health and physique, and there's nothing else very good at it. Definitely going to farm for a potential much better uh, Scorpius Pummeler, so that's good. This ring is completely useless. Uh, we already are overcapped on the Blight Fiend, so it's pretty much garbage. We need to get two Eugle Zykers. Uh, I'm not sure what the upgrade of this is yet, but so far this is a pretty good blue. It's 17% crit damage, total speed, and vit res that I don't need. Uh, I'm using a Beast Collars Cowl. If I upgraded this to the Mythical Beast Collars, they would get a total 200% increased damage, which is, I mean, quite massive to be honest. Um, but I do believe there's a better one called like Serpent something. It gives uh, reduced mind control res uh, duration, which is nice. These pants are pretty good. Not sure if I'm going to be replacing them because I do need poison and acid res and they give offensive ability, but, you know, we'll see as we go. Uh, this is a complete trash relic. It's called Sanctuary. It's shit. The reason why I haven't upgraded it is remember how I told you guys my account got wiped before? I actually don't have a lot of the starting relics, so I've been farming to try to get a lot of the basic relics again. Um, there is one called Ancestor, I think. Ancestor's pretty decent. Uh, Ancestor gives plus one to all shaman and then gives a bunch of stuff for pets the reason why plus one shaman is good plus one necro is great too because you want to really get blight burst as high level as you can along with rotting fumes but shaman is good because it gives mugdrogan pact which is flat fizz which gets converted to acid for your minions it gives them more pierce res which is good because ours are not capped it gives emboldening presence plus which is offensive ability damage fizz resist if you can get the higher fizz resist bleed resistance it gives plus one to briarthorn himself adds an extra level of ground slam and then you know just minor values to grasping vines but overall plus one to shaman and plus one to necro is insanely strong and i do believe that there is an mi off the new boss or the new nemesis boss for amulets that's plus one to all skills which is pretty cool as well um Yep, that's pretty much about it, though, with the character progression. Um, as for the devotions, it's really up to you the way you want to do them. I actually was spec'd into Ishtok and Tree of Life, but I ended up trading Ishtok and Tree of Life uh, for, like, Bismol 
uh, sorry, Bismol's Bonds. Uh, I also ended up grabbing Shepherd's Crook, and I picked up Eye of the Guardian. Uh, Eye of the Guardian's kind of nice. It adds a little bit of clear to the character um, that you kind of don't have. It's a bit inconsistent, but at the same time, the whole build is inconsistent because it's a minion build. So a bunch of inconsistencies can make a consistency, if, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, there also are some minor changes as well. So if you notice, I have one point and tip the scales. If I remove this one point of tip the scales and strip off Panther, I can take these five points right here and actually put them into Ulo, uh, which would give us Ellie Res for pets, which they don't really need, a Poison and Acid Res, which could make gearing easier, Chaos Res, which we both need, and then Cleansing Waters, which is a very niche skill uh, that I would have to add another skill to, but Cleansing Waters can come in handy on a lot of instances where like bosses use like Maven Sphere and give themselves like 85% damage reduction. Uh, I was also debating on basically Bismol's Bonds versus Manticore. I didn't really figure out which one I liked. I'll be honest, I think that this summon here is trash for us. It does reduce offensive ability, but I believe we already reduce offensive ability, but I forgot. Um, Manticore would just be more damage oriented, but the thing about Manticore is it reduces target's resistance, which is useless for us because our set gives us the flat reduction on our Mog Drogon's Pact. Uh, but overall, Manticore would give us 60% poison damage to minions. Um, but Bismol overall is better for minions, right? Because it gives 30% all, 8% total speed, 40% um, health, 10, or sorry, other way around. But it, it's kind of a toss up. You can kind of try out whatever you'd like to see. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much about it. Pretty happy with the build though. I still have a lot of things to upgrade. For example, if I upgraded my accessories here and I upgraded these to like Ugenbog leather and I could drop the ward stones and use augments because I don't actually even have augments on my armor at all. Like this character is pretty fresh still. We could easily see ourselves sitting at 27 to 2800 defensive ability, uh, which is really good. I mean, right now, for example, chance to be hit by most mobs around my area is 80% chance to be crit is zero and later on things it's like chance to be crit is one percent chance to be hit like 92 but overall it's pretty good and then we are trying to get that chaos res up more which we will 100 percent have maxed once we get our augments that i just haven't really gotten yet anyway that's pretty much about it hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves um hope you guys could play the jurassic park summoner just like me uh, i'm not gonna lie it's really cool to create a build that you want in grim dawn I know a lot of people like don't really understand it because they just try to compare games to other games, but they often forget that there are some games like Grim Dawn that you pay 20 to 40 bucks for, you know, with all the expansions, and you truly get to do the like create the build that you want to play. Like I can't stress how how fun and rewarding and really nice that is, you know? It's very nice. Also, I didn't have my webcam on because it's really fucking hot in Texas right now. But anyway, I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Like I said, I'll have the Grim tools linked down below uh it will cover the devotion and every actually is it right here no it's not this one it's right here um it will be linked down below the only thing i want to tell you guys is again this is my gear that i'm using but it's not imported meaning all of these uniques and legendaries have different values on them so if you're going to be looking at like the character it's not going to be exactly accurate so make sure you understand that and the last thing is you can, if you hover over the stats here, you can see how I allocated it. It's pretty much all physique and then spirit to use the set bonus. I don't really have a need for cunning because our cunning, I mean, our offensive ability, if you look, is 2,500. On top of the fact that the Blight Fiend shreds defensive ability by a shit ton, so we can crit pretty much everything, which gives us uptime on our spiders. Now I'm done. Sorry, there's so much to information in Grim Dawn, man. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care, everyone.